Hi guys, welcome to this video on React Native. If you wish to build mobile applications and are confused as to which tool to use, then you're in the right place. This video on React Native will explain what React Native is and guide you through it. But wait, before beginning, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. So here's what you'll be learning in this session. First, we'll understand what exactly React Native is. Then, we'll look at why React Native is being so widely used off lately. Moving ahead, we'll look at the differences between React Native applications and platform-specific applications. After understanding why React Native is used, we'll understand some of the prerequisites for building applications using React Native. Then, we'll understand React Native fundamentals like view, state, props, and style. And lastly, we'll end the session by looking at some of the industry trends of React Native. So let's begin. What exactly is React Native? Now, React Native is a framework that combines the best parts of native development with React to build user interfaces. These applications that are developed using React Native are downloadable on Google Play Store and Apple Store. Plus, because most of the code you write can be shared between platforms, React Native offers a wide collection of UI kits and makes it easy to simultaneously develop for both Android and iOS devices. But you must be wondering, why is React Native used? So let's look at some of the reasons why React Native is used. First up is cross-platform. Cross-platform means that the applications can easily be run on Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So you can build your code base once and then run it on any platform as opposed to software built natively for a specific platform. Next up is performance. Now the React Native apps are compiled into natively written code which enables it to not only work on both the operating systems but also functions the same way on both the platforms with no lags at all. Moving ahead, there's quicker development. Now, React Native offers excellent developer experience. It provides strong developer and debugging tools with meaningful error messages. So working with this tool becomes very easy. A large developer community. Now, there are several GitHub repositories on React Native and groups on Facebook. Stack Overflow is an excellent website with several developers interacting about issues on a regular basis. Next up is wider audience. Now, since React Native applications run on both iOS and Android devices, there's a huge user base. And lastly, React Native has a great career scope. Considering the pace at which the framework took over the market and its simple approach to resolving development problems, the future of React Native looks more promising than ever. So these were some of the reasons why React Native is being widely adopted. So now let's go ahead and look at some of the differences between React Native applications and platform-specific applications. As discussed earlier, React applications work on multiple platforms. While in the case of platform-specific applications, as the name suggests, these applications are built for the specific platform only. Developers have a stronger web development background, while in the case of platform-specific apps, they have a very strong platform's language background. In this case, when you consider iOS, developers have a very strong hold of Swift, which is a programming language used to develop iOS applications. And talking about Android, developers have a very strong hold on Java. Uh, when it comes to React Native, it has a faster build time and is less suitable for complex applications. Comparatively, platform-specific applications have a slower build time and are suitable for complex applications. React Native is best for small development teams with limited resources, while in the case of platform-specific applications, it is best used by experienced developers who have adequate experience in building mobile apps. So now that you know what exactly is the difference between React Native and platform-specific applications, let's look at some of the prerequisites for building apps using React Native. First up, you should have a strong hold on programming concepts like functions, objects, arrays, and to a lesser extent, classes. Now, understanding JavaScript and all the JavaScript libraries and frameworks is crucial. 
And lastly, you need to be familiar with HTML and CSS concepts. So as long as you have a strong hold of these, then React Native development becomes very easy. So now that you know what React Native is, you've understood why it's being used, some of the prerequisites for React Native. Let's look at the basic concepts like view state, props and styling in React Native. Let's begin with view. Now, view is the most fundamental component of building a UI. It is a container that supports layout with flexbox, style, some touch handling and accessibility controls. Now, view maps directly to the native view, equivalent on whatever platform React Native is running on. So here you can see there's a simple code snippet and the output for it. So as you can see, there's a hello world message in a render method and the same is being rendered. And the view component here is being imported from React Native. Now view, as mentioned earlier, acts as a container with support for Flexbox layout and other styles. So Flexbox is designed to provide a consistent layout on different screen sizes. Moving on to state. Now there are two types of data that control a component. One is props and the other one is state. Now props are generally set by the parent and are fixed throughout the lifetime of a component. But for data that is going to change, we make use of state. So here you can see I've made use of the this.state.myState in my render method. You can also use the setState method when you want to change it. Moving on, let's look at props. Most components can be customized when they're created with different parameters. These created parameters are called props, short for properties. Now props are passed from one container to another as a way of passing data between them. So here, Using the name as a prop lets us customize the message in the component. So we can reuse our component for each of our TV shows here. So this is how we can use props in our component. Lastly, talking about style, React Native uses the conventional JavaScript styling for components. So the style names and values are similar to how CSS works. Now to style, we either use inline style or style sheet. So you can see here we've provided inline styling with a background color, a color and a font size. And accordingly, the output is displayed. Moving ahead to our last and final section, let's look at the industry trends today. Talking about salaries, the average salary of a React Native developer in India is around 6 lakh Indian rupees per annum. And the salary of a React Native developer in the US is around 96,000 US dollars per annum. Now, as you can see, React Native has a higher growth trajectory compared to other frameworks. As a result, it's being readily deployed by many companies. Applications like Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Pinterest, Uber, Uber Eats, among others, are developed using React Native. So this was a small session on what exactly React Native is. So if you have any doubts or queries, let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.